This video will demonstrate five different CW keyboard programs. We have three Windows programs and two DOS programs from back in the DOS era. We have FL Digi, CW Term, CW Maestro, YP Log, and CW Type. The reason I chose these five is all five of these have some adjustable settings for the CW parameters of dot to dash or weight or something. So you are able to vary things just a little bit to suit your particular preferences. Let's, this is just going to be an overview. I'm going to go over each one in a separate video. But for this one, we'll just kind of go over each, let you listen to it just a little bit, and then go over some of the settings. And if you're interested, you can go into further details with each individual video on each of these keyboards. So first up is CW Type. And it has a lot of settings available. We have uh, ports, serial ports that you can use, rig expert win key, omni rig. It also has paddle ports. You can also key a rig with it using your serial port. Here's the uh, sound card. You can adjust the tone and the rise and fall time, which I have set at 5, and some other settings. And I'm using the uh, Comic Sans font. So that's some settings that you can adjust. Here's the dash to dot. And we'll send a little word or two here. Okay. And that's that one. It's been around for a long time. It's a great program. And the links will be in the show notes how to get, get all of these. So here's another one I think has even more available functions as far as parameters. YP Logs CW Keyer. And it's set up, as you see, you have up to uh, two tenths of a point. You can adjust the ratios between dot and dash, letter. So each one is individual. This is one of the few programs out there that allows you to adjust this much. Over here, you have the speed, frequency, rise and fall time. This uses an exponential waveform. The others are, are all way raised cosines. But this is one of the unique uh, qualities of this program. And it has a nice sound too. This is one of the QRQ's top choices when the YP log was popular. Okay, now we have a DOS program that I think has a lot of uh, f features on it. And uh, one of the things that's unique about this one is its ability to take any key and reprogram it right, right here with this program. So you don't need any other software to do that. But here's what it sounds like. And you, when you hit the control button, you can see at the bottom a lot of categories. Let's take a look at the uh, adjustments for CW. I've adjusted these just a little bit. Since it's a DOS program running in DOSBox, you have to kind of set these yourself depending on your computer's power. And for me, this is what seemed to sound best to me. And the control, utility, and the U button. So you have some other assignments here. I'm using COM2 to key and some other things. So let me uh, show you that special character. If so you hit Control key uh, K and then press whatever and uh, key that you want to reprogram. I like to reprogram the question mark because if you're if you have to hit the Shift button, that's just an extra step. And why do that with this program? Well, you can just hit the forward slash key and reprogram it to send. So up here you just put whatever dot dashes you want. So we'll put space space dit dit dash dash dit dit and a few more spaces. And then we'll toggle down. Symbol to display, we'll leave it as the question mark there. 
and we'll hit uh, the tab OK and save it. So I'm going to hit a letter and then the question mark. And you can come up with all sorts of combos there, but that's one of my pet peeves in having it always have hitting the shift key to get that question mark out. So that's CW Maestro. Now FL Digi, the same creator for FL Digi, Dave Freeze, also wrote this. This was my first program, CW Term, when I was uh, using computers and the DOS computer. It has its own serial port. This is what it sounds like. And this was this is an excellent program and is uh, still used a little bit in the QRQ community if you still have a DOS computer. I was amazed that even in DOSBox that this has excellent characteristics of timing and it does great so you can because it uses a serial port you can still key your rig with your if you have a serial port or USB to serial port adapter to get into its menu system hit alt P and you can scan back and forth it'll send a file here's the parameters for Morse code words per minute get weight compensation this is one I like I like to trim just a one millisecond off the the dits and the does equally, so it's uh, by weight by uh, time, not by percentage. Now the one above it is by percentage, this weight. So you can go up or down. And you can change the colors, turn the speaker side tone, and on DOSBox it's kind of raspy. So let's see, let's hear what that sounds like. So let's turn that back off. So I prefer to use the uh, the serial port. Okay, which is right there. And all I'm doing here is sending the CW out the serial port as a virtual serial port pair. So in this one, it's sending out COM1 and another software code practice oscillator is listening on COM5 and keying exactly what this is sending. And it's these guys right here for each DOS program. So it's this one right here. See that little green circle? This is just acting like a straight key, but it works really well. That's how I'm doing it. But you can also key a rig with a, a normal serial port. So that's CW term. And now we have FL Digi. And this has a great qualities as well as far as how to adjust your Morse code timing. You have the uh, maximum and minimum speed limit that you want. It goes up to 200 words a minute for you QRQ guys. Here's a unique feature. To one-tenth of a point, you can adjust the dash to dot, edge timing, the rise and fall time, all raise cosine. And this even has two raise cosine selections, Hanning or Blackman. The weight by percentage. And I'm using weight and compensation just like uh, CW term right in here using the QSK function but that that's a advanced feature and I can cover that in another in the video that will uh, go over the details of FL Digi but in general that's what that looks like and it's a very good program it's one, probably one of my favorite if not the favorite Morse code sending programs that's FL Digi two other things I love about FL Digi is Let's uh, say you're ahead of the buffer and somebody wants to interrupt you, you just hit the tab key. You see it turn blue, so you immediately go to the end of the buffer, but you're still in transmit mode. So you just hit the tab key with the, one of your fingers there. I usually use the fifth. And there you have it. 
then you can immediately stop and you don't have to hit escape and then lose everything. You can adjust the font sizes and all that. The other thing I like about this is let's take the speed up a little bit. Use the plus buttons. Well, let's say you're cranking it out at 50 and then all of a sudden you know you're coming up on a word that's going to be very difficult for the other guy to copy so you hit the star button if you look down here you see the star button and it immediately slows it down to whatever you set here at this default so when you hit that star button which on mine is just above uh, the number section of your keyboard just above the nine and that'll take it down when you hit the start button again and watch down here it'll go away I'll hit the start button and now it goes back to the normal speed so you have two automatic speeds and with one key you can uh, slow things down and explain whatever you're gonna say and then when that's done you can uh, go back to your normal speed by hitting the star again. So I really like that feature too. So that's FL Digi. Now FL Digi does not send out the serial port, so you would need to use with FL Digi and YP Log does not have a serial port output. So with both of these programs you need an audio derived CW keying switch. So it will take the audio out from both of these programs from your sound card and it goes to a circuit and that circuit turns that audio voltage that audio energy into a keying voltage on or off that and that's what keys your rig so most of them just use a regular NPN transistor I like to use an opto isolator a FET opto isolator and that works really well for me and I've used that on my ICOM 735 for many years so that's the overview for all these guys and if you're interested in any particular one of them, look for the video to show up. So those are the main five right there. So thanks for watching.